Hi everyone. Welcome to Daisy Case Primitives. My name is Christy and this is my channel about cross stitch primarily and other crafts that I enjoy and that I like to share. Uh, welcome everybody. It is July 1st, 2021. Our summer is clicking away. Here in Missouri, it feels like we're about ready to float away. We've had rain, 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 and more rain, and uh, going to get some more. So today we're in the uh, family room, great room, by the, the mantle. Hold it and I will show you up there a little bit. So we're in a different spot, something else to look at in the background while I'm jibber jabbering. Um, today we have a little bit, I have a punch needle piece. I have a couple fully finishes, a uh, finish, whips, new acquisitions, new starts, and a blast from the past. And um, something that I was able to find that y'all y'all helped me to find. So anyway, trying to get this done technical difficulties. Sorry for the last video that I did was such a blotched up mess, but one of these days I'll get all this figured out. Okay, so as I was digging through some things the other day, um, I came across this punch needle piece. I don't even remember when I did this, but uh, it's something that I drew out myself just from another design and kind of altered it a little bit and use DMC flosses and did this. And uh, I like colonial style also. And um, the uh, pineapple is a symbol of welcome. So um, I kind of like to decorate with those two in different ways. So I finished this and I was thinking, how could, how could I fully finish it? What could I mount it to? So um, I have these paper mache boxes that I, sorry for jiggling you. I painted these, oh, I don't know, a year ago or so. And um, they stack nicely together. And uh, the top one, he doesn't have anything on his top. This one, of course, sits as the foundation for this one. So I was thinking that this would look just fine on the top of this box. And I think the colors will look great together. So that is going to be something that I work on soon. And that's going to be a round piece. I'll, I'll probably lace it. It'll be, um, I think it's going to be a little bit tricky, but we're going to try it. So that, that was a punch needle find that I had. Get some of this out of the way. Okay. A few videos back, I was sharing how, as I was also digging through some things from cleaning out, I'd run across this piece that I'd stitched, I don't know when, in the 90s, probably mid-90s. And this is how far I got with it. And after I pulled it out and was looking at it and thought it was such a cute design, I'd shared it with everybody on a previous video. And um, I knew that it was from the Cross Country Stitching Magazine. And I talked about how I had subscribed to that magazine for many years and had saved them forever. And then in one of my bouts of cleaning out, I got rid of all of those magazines and could just kick myself for doing so now. But thanks to your all's help, you, were, you told me, you helped me track down what issue this piece was in. And I'm, I'm just so grateful. Um, it was kind of a collaboration of several of you making comments and, and going back into your old stash of magazines and digging through and you helped me find what issue. Well, as I was doing a search on eBay, I found it and I was able to purchase it. So here's what the piece will look like completed. And I'm really, I'm almost there. I mean, it wouldn't take much stitching to complete this one. So, I was so excited and happy to finally get it. And now I have the pattern and um, I can work on that. 
there are uh, several little designs in here that um, I would like to stitch. And you know, actually, I did this. I punch needled that, and I had it for many a year. I had it framed. Gave it away. Silly me. Such is life, I guess, but... And I was trying to find another one in here that I thought I would I would stitch. This one's pretty. And there's, you know, the back stitching in old style 90s, but I don't mind that so much. I mean, I probably wouldn't do all the back stitching in the house and those areas, but I just, I thought that was really pretty. And nowadays, you know, with so many different linen color choices and floss choices, it, it's just a whole new world for us now. So I think I might try that. So that was that. Um, something fell on the floor. I'll be right back. I have things all piled up around here and everything sliding off. Okay, so that was that. Um, so that was one of my Blast from the Past stitching pieces. This piece here is a Noah's Ark piece. And I believe I stitched this in... Let's see, I'll just look at that, 1994. This was also a piece uh, from the Cross Country Stitcher magazine. I do not know what issue it was in. I don't know, I don't know much about it. And I don't remember, um, I think, you know, this is eight a cloth and I did all of the back stitching and not to get the glare in there, but this is just another one of the pieces from the past I did finish. There weren't a lot that I did complete, but I really loved this one. It's very country, folk arty, and uh, I've been meaning to pull it out and share it with you uh, in the past, but just hadn't gotten to it. But I thought since I'd found the other one, from the magazine that I would share this one today. So there's that one, if it doesn't fall off. Okay, let's see. What have I been working on? Um, my two finishes, let's go there. I have been watching um, Windy City Stitchers. They have a floss tube and Sarah, one of the ladies, they were doing a whip parade and she shared um, one of her projects, current or past whips was Prairie Schooler, Old World Santa. And I really liked how um, the flosses that she used and, and it just, it looks really cute. It's, it's amazing how something you can see uh, in person especially, but even on the videos here that we watch, how uh, seeing something stitched up just can change your perspective of a pattern. So I went on the hunt to find um, the Prairie Schooler Old World, Old World Santas. Now I've gotta find which one it was. Okay, this is the one, uh, this is the first one. There's actually two. This is Old World Santas too. And I went ahead and found it. I think I got this one from um, Jen Stitching Niche. So I went ahead and I stitched up this guy right here, this one, and here he is completed. It's kind of hard to see, he kind of blends in with the fabric a little. But there's a better close up. And here's my backing fabric. It's a Civil War reproduction fabric that I thought looked like snowflakes. And I, I just really like him. So cute. Um, Sarah had shared that sh her uh, floss color choices. So I kind of followed her lead. And um, I'm using 
week's dye work straw and Lancaster red, which is one of my favorites. The green that I chose is seaweed. And then just some DMC colors. And then what is the fabric that I picked up? Let's see, it's on here somewhere. This is 36 count Winter's Brew. So that's the fabric I'm using for these. So I'm planning on stitching probably two more at least. And I haven't quite decided which ones yet I want to do. I'm thinking probably I want one that's going the opposite direction that the one I just stitched. I'll probably do the one with the pipe. And I like this one. And I like this one. This coat is a different color. And I'm thinking I just need a little more variety. I may need to do something, one of these with some gold. But So those will be a future stitch. But that was my one of my FFOs. So as I was stitching these, I was thinking, I like, I like to um, kind of have an idea of how I'm going to use these pieces that I stitch. And, you know, kind of have an idea, how am I going to use them to, in my decorating and what could I do with them? So I was, as I was stitching that one along, I was thinking, you know, I like wording. And I kind of like, um, in my gatherings, kind of like this, I like to add other things with my with my stitch pieces to just kind of give a little bit more interest. So I was just thinking about how, what could I do? And I came up with this little, this little ditty. I thought, well, you know, these are old world, old world Santas and I like wording. So I thought, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chart this up and I stitched it up and then backed it just like the, the Santa. So they're gonna look really cute together in probably a dough bowl or one of my old wood bowls. But um, I think it just, it'll, it turned out really cute. I'm thinking about, I didn't do it yet. Um, and I, I was going to do this, but I'm going to put some pins or even take a scrap of this fabric and tear it down into a thin strip and um, add it to it on a bulb pin or maybe a, a rusty pin. Maybe put a, uh, I might have some charms. But anyway, I, I kind of stitched it with, or designed the whole piece with the idea of putting a pen or something here, another embellishment in that corner. So um, if you like this, uh, many of you often when I share something that I've designed that for myself, you like it too, and you'll ask for the pattern. So I went ahead and I charted this up and it is in my Etsy, Etsy shop, Daisy Case Primitives, if you're interested. And um, so those were my two FFOs. And I thought that would be a really good piece for, um, I'm kind of getting into the mode of stitching in July. So I thought this would be a good, another little, a little choice there. And I'll be working on more of those Santas for July. Okay, next is my FO, finished object. This is Flag Folk by Not Forgotten Farm. I don't have the pattern out, I've already put it away. This um, is stitched on 36 count 18th century rook fabric, which I really love it. I love how this turned out. I um, made a couple little changes to mine. Um, where you see these little stars on the pattern, it called for, oh, they were designed like little squiggly pinwheels maybe and I thought well I like stars for my patriotic stitching so I added those in there this one in the middle 
couple at the bottom. I added in the bottom corner there the year that I completed it. And over on this side, it was kind of plain in this area. So I thought, oh, I'm going to try uh, stitching a vine in there to kind of make it evened out a little bit. But I'm thrilled with this. I love how it turned out. I ordered a frame and I'm waiting on it to get here. I was hoping it would be here by by the time that I would do this video so that I would have it fully finished to share with you. But I'm really pleased with that and uh, I'll have this to add to my decorating next year. So that was my finish. Okay, let's see. What else have I been working on? And now my bag is stuck. And we may not get to see this one. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. Okay. I'd shared this with you before as a acquisition that I purchased this uh, primitive punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine just for this particular piece. So I started this. This is Red House Sampler by Teresa Miller. And it's, it's just so pretty. Finally got all of the uh, flosses that I needed. Mark my page here or I'll end up losing it. And this is my start. I'm stitching this on 36 count bees knees. And really love this. The modeling on this is great on this piece. So anyway, that was a new start. Looking forward to making more progress on that. So I'm kind of getting in the mood for uh, stitching some Halloween pieces, uh, bowl fillers. And so I've been going through all of my patterns and I have lots to choose from. And I just pulled this one out. This was a gift. Thank you, by the way. This is Stacy Nash Primitives, the Good Stitching Witch Pin Keep. And I really like the colors in this. And because it's all, you know, all the stitching notions and tools. And of course, the Mustard House. So I got started on this one. Let me see. This one I am using 36 count butter crunch. And I think that's, is it R and R? I don't remember. Um, I got it from uh, Hollis Hands Creates, which by the way, I was uh, fortunate enough to meet Christine Hollis. If you uh, have not watched her videos, she has a floss tube and an Etsy shop. She recently moved to Kansas City and we met at Stitching Group. And uh, I like to buy a lot of things from Christine. And now that she's uh, really close to me, and I mean, I can, I can order something and two days later I've got it. So it's really handy <laughs> and kind of dangerous. Um, so anyway, go check out Christine, Hollis Hands Create, and uh, buy lots of goodies from her. So this is my little meager start. I just got started on the roof of the house and uh, a little bit of the the corner of the house with the mustard. And let's see, I should have showed you the floss colors. I kind of, I didn't have the called force, so I just pulled out some that I had on my own. And I think these will all work just fine. And this is on my floss ring that I just recently bought from Crafty Cat Stitcher. It's a little daisy, you know, daisy case primitives. I love daisies. Little daisy 
with a bead and a little bird on a little branch charm. So cute. I've bought a few thread rings from her. This one's a little bit larger than, you know, of course, than just a pin keep. But this one is Prairie Schooler's Witching Hour. I like the witches at the top on their brooms. And <laughs> check out that cat. The cat's hanging on. Hanging on for dear life. Um, what I like about this one too is the spooky house and of course the alphabet. I probably will do something here rather than stitching the words goodbye. Um, but we'll see what happens there. So that was in the next one that I worked on. And, uh oh, what is this? Oh, I think this is, oh shoot. Anyway, here's my start. I can't remember what this fabric is. This might be bees and knees. But I got started on the house. And this is really gonna be fun, I think. And I will probably frame this one and display it. All right. Okay. Let's see. Talked about everything back there. Now let's move on to some new acquisitions. Um, I don't know when, yeah, this was published in 2021, but anyway, I think I got this one from um, Jen Stitching Niche. It's Mary Green Ashton School, 1846. And I was drawn to it because it's square. I love square samplers, don't know why, and for all of the red. And because my last name is Green too. Let's see, this one ends up being 270 by 272. The model was stitched on 32 count linen. I will use 36. And it calls for DMCs, Cosmo, Versoa, and NPI, but I will use the DMCs. I haven't kitted it up yet, and I don't know when I'll start it, but I have it. I have got it. Um, another one that I was able to find, um, Brenda of Brenda and the Serial Starter. By the way, Brenda, if you're watching, I hope you're doing well and uh, always continued prayers for you to just keep on improving and feeling good and keeping your stitching mojo going. And uh, we just love you and uh, still praying for you. Anyway, Brenda had shared a fully finish of this piece um, I don't remember when, and I had been going back and watching some of their past videos, so I can't really tell you what video it was. Um, but anyway, this is from Plum Street Samplers called the Halloween Hornbook Sampler. And when she shared her finish, I thought, oh, that is so cute. I got to get that. So I tracked this down and I don't remember where I found it. But I did see others, so this may be something that you can find also. So that may be part of my Halloween stitching coming up. And you know, each one of these could potentially be stitched individually, each one of these little blocks. And you could make dough bowl pillows. But I, I really liked how her finish turned out, so I'll probably do it that way. All right, um, let's see, another one, another recent purchase. I had seen this shared, and when I saw it, I immediately asked Christine Hollis, can you, do you have this? Are you getting it? And she said, yep, it's on its way. This is from Needlework Press called And Be Kind to One Another. It's a companion piece to um, this one, their Be Diligent. 
I don't have this pattern, but I'm thinking how pretty would that be? I don't know why I don't have it, but anyway, I was able to get this. It's so pretty. And I, there's something about these long samplers now. Sorry, I went from the bottom up. <laughs> That's kind of silly. Anyway, so I bought this and um, I pulled out 36 Ligonier Latte R&R. &R. And I can get it opened. This is the color. I'm waiting on some more of the flosses to get here. And I will probably start this one pretty soon. Which reminds me, um, talking about long samplers. Back here, right here, is Miriam Dow. And I finished her sometime back and I shared her. But Miriam's been traveling. She's been traveling around the house. And today I thought, you know, I want to see her more. I initially, when I stitched her, I planned on hanging her. I didn't really know how I would finish her. I uh, thought probably in a frame, and then I found this board um, at Hobby Lobby, and I thought, that's that's about the right size. So I took a chance and bought it. And uh, anyway, Hubby and I finished her off by, I just folded the edges of the sampler under, and laid it on the board, and then I had some old upholstery tacks, and we just tacked it on there. And uh, so anyway, I initially hung her by the front door. I think you may have seen it in the patriotic decorating video. So I thought, well, I want to, I want to see her more. So I hung her here. Um, my stitching spot is right over there, and. The kitchen's in there, and so I can see her from the kitchen table. I can see her from my stitching spot. When we come in the back door, the back door is the main entrance. That's how we utilize the the house here. The way it's situated on the lot, it just makes sense to come in the back door. So when we come in, I can see her immediately when I look into this room. So she's been, she moved. She took up residence here. She also serves another another purpose in that underneath her is a light switch, which functions the fan on the wood burning stove. Over here on this side, hold on, I'll go for a little ride. See that light switch there? I hate these things. <laughs> I'll share with you my pet peeve. I don't like light switches like that. I don't like thermostats. Um, I hate oh, cold air return vents. They just they just mess up the wall. They stand out on my darker painted walls, and I just it's my pet peeve. Like I don't like cords like that little light right there. I strategically <laughs> y'all think I'm silly. I'm sure you already do. Um. I placed the cord to that lamp where it's the cord is kind of hidden behind the leg of the table. I just don't like seeing that stuff. Uh, mostly they're blaring. They just stand out so much. So anyway, so Miriam is serving a couple purposes for me. I can see her and she's covering up something ugly that I don't want to see. <laughs> so there's that. Oh, uh, let's see. What else? Kind of future plans. I had, I, I don't even know how I came across this little, this little booklet. It is from, I will have to put the link below. I'm sorry that I can't tell you where I got it. Heather, Heather Slidem. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but she's created this book. It's a lovely little book. Uh, she has cross-stitched designs in here. Here's one of the pieces in the book, and I plan on stitching that. I love this little witch. I like this little thankful um, candle wrap. Um, and the... Let me see if I can find some more pictures here. 
There's another, there's an All Hallows Eve cross stitch piece. It's just a lovely little book, an autumn bookmark. Um, this is her artwork that I know that she sells note cards and I think prints. Uh, of course, this, well, I thought there was more artwork on the front. It's hard to see. Anyway, um, it's just a lovely little book and she kind of, oh, she kind of narrates or kind of stories along in the book. Here's another piece of her artwork. Isn't that sweet? I will post a link or maybe try to run it across the screen here, uh, her Etsy shop name. So, Frost on the Pumpkin, an Old Fashioned Autumn. Last thing I wanted to share with you is my stitching bucket list item, another piece that I have that someday I would like to stitch. And what I like about this one, of course, it's square and it's a mustard colored house. But I do, I love the colors. It just, that's just me. And it's just a sweet little sampler. I think I found this one on eBay some time ago. But that's, that's one that I want to do before I die. On my bucket list. That's the end of this one, guys. The question of the day. Thanks for playing along, you guys, and always answering my questions. It's just, it's just nice to get to know you all and learn about each other and get new ideas. And you guys are just such a blessing to me. I, I just, I can't, I can't tell you how much. Thank you so much. But question of the day. I would like to know, what is an item on your stitching bucket list? Something that you want to stitch one of these days. Um... So share with me. I will see you next time, guys. Take care and stitch all the things. See ya.